Traditional financing tended not to incorporate the elements of sustainable development. It doesn't make sense to deliver an infrastructure project to a community without taking into account the gender, environmental and social aspects. This is lovely. Wow. Look at this. Nature is very beautiful and has so many benefits. We need to protect it, ultimately, not just for now, but also for future generations. In this catchment that we're in at the moment, the Amgaini, our dams hold about 800 million cubic meters of water. The soil in this catchment holds about 1.6 billion cubic meters of water. So the value of these natural ecosystems with intact soil, intact land cover are absolutely critical to our water security. So what we really need to do is conserve as much of the land as possible. So what do we do where people do need a place to stay, but there is a water system nearby? The critical thing is that the infrastructure that we put in place are built correctly and are maintained adequately. We're basically here to visit some of the projects that we're financing to spread the importance of mainstreaming biodiversity and encouraging environmental and social sustainability. The DBSA works closely with the municipalities and other partners such as government, the private sector, NGOs and academics to deliver infrastructure projects that incorporate the gender, social and environmental aspects so that our projects can be sustainable and they can remain relevant, just improving the livelihoods of the communities in those areas by doing it in such a way that the integrity of nature is preserved. I'm from Eastern Cape and Lape Deben. At Deben, the Seclair Estate, We are living there together. In our rural areas, we don't just throw the rubbish anyway. And here in Deben, we just throw it. And not knowing what the AP in practice is, I'm fully. I met a one, right? Right, ma'am. Do you see happy there? There was a kid, she wanted some people to be the part of what she's going to be doing in the settlement. I just volunteered myself. Communities are the direct beneficiaries of the services that ecological infrastructure provides. If the environment is unhealthy or unwell, and it yields poor services. It's those vulnerable communities that are most at risk. Part of the Palmeet Ecological Infrastructure Project entailed capacitating and employing people from informal settlements within or in close proximity to the catchment. And through our EnviroChap program, they've gone through a whole series of training exercises, helping them to understand the natural environment, see the harm that's being done, and how that influences them from a negative point of view and how it could influence them from a positive point of view. We do illegal stem cleaning. We do door-to-door -door teaching people on how to keep the environment clean. Mondays, we go and do biomonitoring. The lead funding agency was the DBSA and that enabled the Palmeet project to receive funding to continue with rehabilitation work in the Palmeet catchment. We are in the Palmeet Nature Reserve, so we now have this nice green corridor which we see on either side. It offers those services that have elsewhere been lost because of development encroachment. Things like purification of the water just by plants being present. The plants are able to uptake and trap some of the pollutants. But that's what's nice about the nature reserve. I mean, I know the water's polluted, but at least the habitat is rich. Wow. Whereas up by the factories and stuff, or down by the other end, there's too many houses, too much pollution. The houses are like right on the river, or the factories are right on the river. At least the habitat is good here. It gives them a chance. By protecting natural spaces, we are actually letting nature do its job. When the natural infrastructure works properly, it also actually helps bring down our cost of funding. Remember that our rivers, you know, 
They are passing through these industries. There's a lot of industrial uh, pollution, the spillages, and then also the issue of waste. You know, waste is quite a, a huge uh, challenge. You know, it's piled so much pressure on our infrastructure. There's a lot of pollution leading into the dam and probably the entire water system. Where is it coming from? The majority of this water is coming from a sewer system in Mpopomeni that is not actually working. This is effectively slightly diluted sewage that is coming down and entering into Midmar Dam. Amgani catchment services around 5 million people. It's critically important. The issue is one of very, very high pollution levels as a consequence of poor maintenance and management of a sanitation system. It's not all bad news. There are increasing areas under conservation and under biodiversity protection. I'm from KZN, born and bred. I did not think we'd ever get to this point where the water is so polluted. It is a wake-up call for us young people to make sure that we are involved in ensuring environmental sustainability. We started working in Bokomeni as the Umgeni Ecological Infrastructure Partnership. Yeah to basically look after the Umgeni catchment from source to sea. Mm. We look at the entire catchment as a very integrated socio-ecological system. Where we were today in Bopomeni, in between the sewage treatment works and the dam, is a very vast wetland because the wastewater treatment works in Bopomeni wasn't working. The wetland itself was getting degraded. We could not just refurbish a wastewater treatment works and leave the wetland because the wetland supplements the wastewater treatment works. If you rehabilitate a wetland, the biodiversity in that wetland will improve and your wetland will be functional. The function of the wetland is purification. For the actual rehabilitation, we had an engagement with the community trust that owns this land. But now one of the issues that we have obviously is, is livestock, as you can see, that's grazing on the wetland. So it's not only environmental issues, but also there's a lot of social dynamics as well. We don't just um, look at the you know, ecological aspects of things. We also look at the social aspects. Hence, we have to engage um, the trust and the community in terms of the importance of this wetland for water security. We really do try and involve people and ensure that communities understand the work that we do. We've been knocking on their doors and teaching them that we only have 1% fresh water. We don't have another earth. What is happening on the society is affecting the nature. My specific role within the city is to coordinate the climate change research. In Deben, we see a lot of extreme weather events. There's a lot of flooding taking place. We all came here to look for the job, to look for the better way of life. I was looking for something that will be mine so that I can stay peacefully. Dense vegetation helps to slow down floodwaters. The Quarry Road informal settlement, you've got a community living right on the water's edge. They're at risk there because they don't have this natural barrier. It was two o'clock, that told me, say, gee, we WhatsApp group, we WhatsApp group lay early warning system. It drainage, it was already blocked. Then there was a lot of water on the road. And I saw Smiso on the bridge and he was checking what is happening on Quarry Road. Then I went to my house. I kept sending these messages. Please stay awake, don't sleep. The channel of the water changed and came to our entrance. There was sound of that water. I hear people talking outside. Leave everything, come out. Then I, I knocked to my neighbor. I said, you guys, you're still here, come out. And we noticed while we were walking, this water can take you. I said, let's just hold each other and form a human chain. But look at the damage. This is what we talk about, the extreme weather events, which are likely to affect our situation is bad. They told me that your house, it was all gone. It's like they have never been any houses there. A key element of a just transition is ensuring that we support projects that mitigate against the impact of climate change and also adapt and become more resilient to the shocks that are brought about by climate change. 
about 350 of the structures in the informal settlement got washed away. Because of our community-based flood early warning system, not a single life was lost due to the flood. This is not just about the trees, you know, it's about the whole system, how it's worked together with supporting the built infrastructure. So now we are starting to see their perspective changing, you know, especially with the recent floods. They now understand that these systems need to be maintained. Otherwise, if they are not maintained, you know, we know what will happen. Our mission at the DBSA is to build Africa's prosperity using our financial and non-financial resources in partnership with our stakeholders to promote the just transition to create a sustainable, low-carbon, resilient and inclusive society. There is always hope. We are here, we are hope. In fact, the young minds are hope. So it's very critical for us to be in these spaces also to make a difference.